What is the simplest atom? It's hydrogen, with one proton and one electron. And back in 1913, when Niels Bohr introduced the Bohr model of the atom, it seemed simple as well. An electron that orbits a proton, like how the Earth orbits the Sun. But this was short-lived. By the 1920s, electrons were found to have a probability cloud and could not be modeled like stars and planets, meaning that the electron could be slightly closer to the proton or further away, yet it still had a very distinct energy level, and it's still referred to as an orbital today despite the Bohr model being incorrect. What Bohr didn't know at the time is that the proton is a composite particle. It's made of other particles. And this was confirmed in 1968, a half century after Bohr's model was first introduced. And since then, the proton is believed to consist of three quarks. Fast forward another half century to the discovery of the pentaquark in 2015. With one antiquark and four quarks, this is possibly the true structure of the proton, because today's higher energy experiments separate all the components. At lower energies, the antiquark would cancel with one quark, thus the appearance of only three quarks. Now let's use this new structure of the proton to explain the atom, beginning with the one antiquark in the proton, and let's give it a positive charge. What would happen to an electron that is negatively charged? Two oppositely charged particles are attracted to each other, and this force is based on the square of the distance between the two, otherwise known as the inverse square law. But now, let's add one of the quarks to the proton, and let's use a negative charge symbol for this. What does this resemble when these particles are in close proximity? A dipole. And a bar magnet is an example, with a north and a south end. A static magnet has a force that is now based on the cube of distance, meaning that its force can be very strong, but it decreases quickly. And also using the magnet example, what happens when you put two north ends or two south ends of that magnet together? They repel. And so let's now imagine two negatively charged particles lining up in this dipole, and the result is a repulsion, just the same. It's a very strong force, but again, it diminishes quickly at the cubit distance. So the electron may be attracted from far away, but as it gets closer to the proton, it encounters this repulsive force. And this energy level, the orbital, can be calculated based on the point where these two forces are equal. The math is not shown here in this video for simplicity, but I'll put the URL to a paper with the mathematics in the video description. Okay, now this solves one of the issues. For the other issue, which is the electron's curious position around the proton, let's add the remaining quarks, the proton. The electron's position will depend on the alignment with these repulsive dipoles, all while the proton itself spins. It's constantly being pushed and pulled, and with so many variables, it's easier to estimate its probable location of the electron but it still follows the classical laws of physics. Now imagine if Bohr had this critical information about the proton when he created his model, that it's a composite particle, that it is possibly a pentaquark with four quarks and one antiquark. How would models of the atom have evolved over the past century with this info? The next century does not have to be like the past century. The pentaquark discovery is significant and it should change the way we think about atoms in the future.